Hi there, this is the story of Marianne. Now Marianne loved to help her mum around the house. She liked to do a bit of cleaning, a bit of hoovering up, anything she could do to help. Now one day, it was a Saturday, and it was pouring down with rain outside. Marianne's mum said, oh, I've forgotten something in the shop, Marianne. I'll tell you what, though, it's so wet. You stay here and I'll go. But whatever you do, don't let anybody in the house. Okay, now that's all good advice. If you're at home alone, don't open the door to people. So Marianne got her favourite book. She sat down in the chair and she began to read. Well, it wasn't long before, or maybe you've guessed it, there was a knock at the door. Oh, I shouldn't go, says Marianne. Mum says not to go. But you know, Marianne, uh, uh, in her door, she had one of those spike holes. So she crept up to it and she looked out and she got the biggest surprise, such a surprise that she opened the door. And this is what she saw. And I'll have to draw it in. It was the biggest one of these you've ever seen. It was the biggest green bag you've ever seen in all your life. Hello, says the green bag. My name is Bad Thoughts. And I've been in the neighborhood looking for girls and boys just like you. Oh, I don't have any bad thoughts, says uh, Marianne. Well, you do now. And he rushed past Marianne into the house, tipped himself up and put all bad thoughts all over the floor, all anywhere, anywhere you could find. Oh, stop, stop, says Marianne. What am I going to do? All these bad thoughts. Well, she got hold of a dustpan and brush. And you know what happens when you try to get hold of uh, dust with a dustpan and brush? It seems to scatter everywhere. And just as she was trying to figure out what to do, there was another knock at the door. Oh, I shouldn't go. Um, what am I going to do with the bad thoughts? Now, bad thoughts had already put himself in another room and he folded himself up in his bag and he'd gone to sleep. So now what's Marianne going to do? I know. She thought she will creep out and I'll look again through the spy hole. And that's exactly what she did. She got the biggest surprise that she could ever get. And this is what she saw. I'll have to draw it in because I bet you wouldn't see one of these too often. It was the biggest fountain pen you've ever seen. There we go. Hello, says the fountain pen. My name is Bad Words, and I'm in the neighborhood looking for girls and boys just like you. Oh, I don't have any bad words, says Mary Ann. Ah, but you've got bad thoughts. He's a mate of mine. And he pushed past Mary Ann right into the house and began to write all sorts of bad words all over the wall. Stop, stop, Mary Ann, says Mary Ann. What am I going to do? Well, she got hold of her, uh, something to scrub the bad words off. But you know what happens when you get soap and water onto, bad, onto writing? It just gets worse. And then when uh, the bad words had gone all over the house and finished uh, writing everything, went into a back room and fell asleep on the sofa. Oh, dear, says Mary Ann. Now what am I going to do? Just as she was trying to figure that out, you guess it, there was another knock at the door. Oh, I shouldn't go, says Mary Ann. Mum says not to go, and look what's happened already. I've got bad thoughts, I've got words, bad words. Well, I'll just go, I'll look at the spy hole, and that's exactly what she did. She scrubbed forward, she looked at the spy hole. She got the biggest surprise, such a surprise, she opened the door. And this is what she saw. It was the biggest one of these you've ever seen. And there it is. It was a giant boot, size 95. Never seen anything like it, with studs out of it. Hello, darling, says the boot. My name is Bad Actions, and I'm in the neighborhood looking for boys and girls just like you. You've got some of my friends in there. You've got bad thoughts, you've got bad words, and whenever they are, you get bad actions. I don't have any bad actions, says Marianne. Well, you do now, and he pushed right past Marianne into the hallway, and right there in the hallway there was this lovely long mirror, and the boot went right up to it and went smash, and broke it into hundreds of pieces. Stop, says Mary Ann, but she couldn't stop the boot, it went into the living room, smashed everything he could find, and then when he smashed everything all over the house, went off into a back room, sat on the chair, and fell asleep. Oh, says Mary Ann. 
What am I going to do now? Well, just as she was trying to figure that one out, you guessed it. No, I'm not going to go to any more, says Marianne. Look what's happened. I've got bad thoughts, I've got bad words, I've got bad actions. Can it get any worse? Just then, you know, the letterbox opened up. Mary Ann, hello Mary Ann, I'm here to help you. Well, Mary Ann couldn't believe it. When she was looking through the letterbox, she could see a bit of light. So she thought, oh, well, can it get any worse? So she crept forward and she looked through the spy hole and this is what she saw. Well, let's draw it in. She saw the biggest one of these you've ever seen. And it was a candle. And the candle said, Mary Ann, I can help you. I see you've got bad thoughts and bad words and bad actions in there. Oh, well, they're not mine, says Mary Ann. Well then, who invited them in? Well, I did, says Mary Ann. Right then, so they are yours. Well, I can help you. And you know, Mary Ann noticed that wherever the uh, light was shining, uh, the bad thoughts that were there and the bad words that were on the wall uh, were beginning to disappear. And just then, there was some, hey, stop, don't let him in. There was some shouting from the back room. If he's going to come in, we don't want to be here. And then uh, three, uh, the bad thoughts, the bad words, the bad deeds ran out of the house as quick as they could because uh, there was the candle at the door. So Mary Ann let the candle in. And you know that uh, glass mirror that was there in the hall uh, went back together again. And all the bad thoughts and all the bad words uh, were disappearing because the candle had come in. Now he says, well, who are you? And this is what the uh, candle said. He says, I'm known by many names, but uh, I'm known now by this name. I'm going to put this up, see if you can read it with me. You read that? Should say light. Now, if you're following that, that should say the word there. So it's not. Oh no, light over there. And what's next? What do you think the next word's going to be? Well, I can't hear you even if you're shouting at me, but well, here it is. There we are. I'm known as the light of the world, said the candle. And just as the candle was uh, telling Mary Ann uh, his name, um, there was a another knock at the door. It was a different knock this time. It wasn't like the other knocks at all, but uh, it kept on knocking and uh, kept on knocking. And then it began to get a bit louder and then a bit louder and then a bit louder. Oh, and Mary Ann woke up. She'd been asleep. She'd been dreaming. Well, she must have been dreaming, really, when you think about it, because there's no such thing as giant green bags and no such thing as giant fountain pens or big boots or anything like that. So it was Mary Ann's mum coming back from the shop. Let me in, Mary Ann. So Mary Ann opens the door, let her in. She began to tell her mum all that had happened. You wouldn't believe the dream that I had. I, I had bad words and I had bad thoughts and I had a big... But Calm down, says Mary Ann, calm down. Let's go in and you can we sit down. I make a cup of tea. And you can tell me all about it. So Mary Ann's mum made a cup of tea. Because she's a very wise mum. And you know, mums are very wise. And uh, she said, now Mary Ann, tell me what it was about. Well, she says, I, I had a dream. It must have been a dream. And uh, there was a giant green bag. And it was uh, full of bad thoughts. And came into the house and put bad thoughts all over the house. Then there was a giant uh, fountain pen. Put bad words all over uh, the house and then there was a big boat and Kevin smashed everything up and he said his name was Bad Actions. But then you know what mum, there was somebody else and uh, there was a giant candle and uh, he says I'm known by uh, many names but uh, my name now is the uh, light of the world and you know as soon as he came in uh, everything went back to normal again. Oh it was really good and I was so uh, relieved that that had happened. Well says Marianne's mum, you know what it is, uh, you just had a dream. And what the dream was about, really, that house, uh, I'm going to put a house in, haven't I? That house, really, is the house of uh, your life. And uh, it was the house of your life. And in our lives, we do have bad thoughts, we do have bad words, and we do have bad actions. And the uh, light that came in, well, 
he's known by many other names. Can you guess what name uh, he's known by? Well, he's known by the name of Jesus. And when he came in, he was able to take away all the bad thoughts, all the bad words, and all the bad uh, actions. And of course, he's the only one that can, says Mary Ann's mum. Uh, but you've got to invite him in. And that's what you did. Now, um, that was just a dream. But really, in the same way that you invited the uh, candle in to your, into the, your house, you had to invite the candle in so that all the bad thoughts, bad words and bad actions could be cleaned up. Well, he was known as the light of the world. He's also got another name. And his other name is Jesus. And Jesus went and died on the cross. And we know him as the light of the world. And the same way in which you invited uh, the candle into your house to get rid of all the bad thoughts, all the bad words and all the bad actions, you've got to invite Jesus into your heart as well, into your life. Uh, the house represented uh, Mary Ann's heart and life. And it's the same thing for you and I. Now, Jesus died on a cross for all the things that you and I have ever done wrong. Now, we've all got bad thoughts. We've all got bad words. We've all got bad actions. And when Jesus died there, uh, you know, he looked out on the people that were looking at him. He says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Jesus has been punished for all the things that you and I ever do wrong. Now, if you do something wrong, you're punished, aren't you? But I said Jesus was being punished. Had he done anything wrong at all? The Bible says he never did anything wrong. It says he never committed any sin. Yet I said he was being punished. Well, he was being punished for you and I. So that we could get rid of our bad thoughts, our bad words, and our bad actions. And the only way we can do that is by asking Jesus to come into our lives and to forgive us for the things that we've done wrong. Now, when I was younger, I did that. And that was the best thing that I'd ever done. Because then uh, he was my friend and he'd been with me for many, many years. And so the best thing that you could ever do is to ask Jesus to come into your life and to be your friend. Well, that's the story of Mary Ann. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, when you have bad thoughts, bad words, bad actions, the only one that can help you is the light of the world, who is Jesus. And of course, Jesus didn't just die on the cross. We've not long celebrated Easter. And we're remembering that Jesus rose again and he is alive today. That's why he can help us uh, with our bad thoughts, bad words and bad actions. Thank you for listening. See you again soon. Bye for now.